Ooh. I, I don't know what he touched it. <laughs> <laughs> Tell him not to touch. Yeah. <laughs> Hear that? <laughs> yeah, that's good. Yeah. Okay, I'm gonna go through that. You don't need anything? No. Hello. 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 Hi, Grandpa. Ooh, hello. Really good now. Where's Jutra? Hey, hey, oh, ready to go on or? Ah. Uh, Whenever um, you're ready. Okay. Good. Go, 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 on the Tahoe, Tako, Oh, I'm very proud of you. Oh, just let it slip, Da <laughs> Oh, that nice you think. Oh, thanks, hook, oh, thanks, tip. The clerk. Oh, this is a clear quiet quiz. My it's got. Oh, it's going to work picnic. Oh, good. So it's marking in the room, it's picnic. She shall duck submit. Quiz Hansa gets a kick. Quiz Hansa. Joe, what's good? Oh, my six. Oh, the key has left. You know, it's good. Oh, the shit. Joe, madam, let's add the shit ones. No, it's a knick. On the huddle. The <laughs> Hmm. 
Uh, <clears throat> I want to say a prayer for the Sahaksak to the mother, mother of our creator. Santamari umikta kata Ohtik mis ta haksak the nohtik she tiki akuk pen who ati yukup chu Are you okay with taking some questions from the audience? Uh, little questions, not big stuff. Maybe. <laughs> <laughs> try. So if you have a question, feel free to unmute your mic to ask. Two pot. How old were you when your father took you out fishing to teach you how to fish? Man, oh, Oh, uh, yeah, Aston. No, for my text. No, chicken. Ah. Uh. What, where? Yeah. So. I'm called the harmatics. No Oh, 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 Hmm. 
I didn't know halibut like perch. It's their bait. Ah. <laughs> There's a thing on there. Yeah. Mm. Uh, home pieces. Uh, uh. Mm -hmm. Your camera does not work. Sit next. Job book. Uh, 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 mm. uh, remember, uh, Grandpa. Wamak well, used to have set his net for birch. Yeah, yeah. Uh, oh, peace. When did you start speaking chorus, Grandpa Pat? Yesterday. <laughs> 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 Fast right away. <laughs> oh, <yeah. laughs> oh. I'm a fast learner. You shouldn't call Dixie. Right, that's okay. <laughs> yeah, I miss it. I used to talk with my late wife, eh? she was very fluent. Eh? So I learned. A lot from her too, so. but I never really spoke it. But I understand all all of it when uh -huh. they were talking. Out there, our elders say, but I guess it's stuck in my little brain, and so. Uh, hey, Kuns. Chawati Asha fish traps. How would we talk about fish traps at the mouth of rivers? Who is Lakshit? Fish trap. <laughs> so the wooden ones, rock kind. Gee, oh. you got me there, I. Eh? Oh. Oh, good. It's not Ada. Mixed to and roots my Alice. Miss you, Ahwa Wamit. The one in the river, Mishwa. Mishwa. Uh, Mishwa. Okay. Mm. You got the very first time I've heard that. The reason she's talking about it is when this woman was there going to get fish and she got mm -hmm. the fish out of the trap. Mishwa, she said, but the scales are backwards. That's what she's talking mm -hmm. about at that time. Uh, Mm -hmm. ah. Boys and fish. Ah. Uh, mm -hmm. uh, who us? Uh, Miss Uwa or Miss Uwa? Miss. Miss. Miss Uwa. Miss Uwa. Miss Uwa. Yeah. That's the first time I heard that word, yeah. Thank <laughs> uh, you. Nana, I took the acting on eight seconds. 
Talk about clue corner, Grandpa. What clue corner is used for? Problem in the tribe. They were the more or less like a police of the village. They looked after the after the villages to keep everything straight. And the Sukhana. was a top cultural thing in our band, in our, all the bands, I guess, yeah, on the coast. And they would go up in the woods when there's a problem and get together and talk about what's, what's happening, what they should do to straighten things out. And they would also go up there too when the chief is going to hold a batas, powwow, whatever you call it. No. And they went up there for different things, but mainly they were like the police. They looked after the villages to keep everything straight. But I know in one instance in in uh, Eshkut, my son Davy was told by late Alice Paul. There was a guy, a, a chief, and there was uh, battles going on and. He was trying to talk, and his wife was holding their baby, and I guess the baby was crying away, and the uh, mother couldn't stop stop the baby from crying, and the guy got really mad at his wife and told her to stop the baby from crying, but she couldn't. I guess the baby was sick, something seriously wrong. That guy went right up to the, to the uh, mother and poked a baby with a spear, put him right on the end of a spear and walked to the middle of the, of the hall. And that guy, the baby must have passed away because of that, what he did. Apparently, this guy was a really mean, mean guy. The people didn't like him. And we apparently, they were all disappointed and mad at what he did. 
they didn't like him at all because of his so he acted mean to everybody so I'll tell the story about the same guy they must have been on the beach and one of my family members, my great great grandfather or whatever, great 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 was how far back it goes. Anyway, they were on the beach there, they were talking away among themselves and the guy fell asleep. And my my great 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 grandfather must have got a rock and hit him on the head with it and killed him. Then people were glad that they, they they got rid of him. So that's a story I was told by my late uncle and my dad. And that was the mean guy, eh? Yeah, he was a chief. Yeah. Yeah, he was mean, very mean. And, and Alice, Alice Paul was the one that told Davy about it. That goes way back, I guess. just before even the white man showed up. Who chose the clue corners? My late stepfather or father-in-law, whatever you call him, Abel John, was saying the head chief owns the clue corner thing. That was his. But the other chiefs they could use it if they needed to use it, but they had to get permission from the owner. Oh, nice. So each chief hot wave has a clue corner? Yeah, they're the owners. Oh, wow. Eh? Yeah. That's what Abel told me when he was living with us. They're going to hold one on 21st of June at Matmas. Next, oh. month, next month they're going to hold it. I don't know how they'll hold it because when you plan a Tukwana, a chief has a son that is born, so right away he's going to start planning a Tukwana when the boy becomes of eight to age eight or something. Everybody in the village was involved in a Tukwana. They all had a chore they had to do. So there was a planning, pre-planning, implementation, and evaluation. The planning took real long, as long as for me, before five to eight years. And when mm -hmm. the time was ready, everybody was ready. They had a house they were going to put the child in. Women were there talking to that child. So I just wanted to base this one, one story of one boy from Heshkut. So this parents were gonna go in a canoe, everything was planned. They were gonna take their boy with them. The woman said, the mother said, I left my blanket. So she got up and he said, I'll come with you. Her husband said, so they walked up together. And when the boy was alone by the canoe there, the wolves came in, they grabbed the boy, took him into the forest. And when wow. the parents came down, the village is in, everything is planned. The villagers are all mad at the couple. Why did you leave him alone? He knew that something was going to take him. But they took him into, a, I guess, the house is ready, where these people were talking to him, taught him a song, his own epic. Everything was his own. They taught him. And um, after about, I don't know how many days, it depends on how long it took them to teach that boy. When he came back, you know, that certain people they can designate it, who's going to grab him away from the pirates. And, and when they'd done that, you know, they had him all dressed up in those hemlock boughs. Mm -hmm. They took that boy into that big building. The woman that undressed him, they burned that 
branches he was wearing. And uh, they asked him, what did they teach you when you were in the house? What did the quiet teach? What did the wolves teach you when they had you? He said, I can show you. He said, he went to the spruce tree. He started chanting this chant they taught him. And while he was singing, the wolves, the branches come towards him. And Father Prabhupada was really upset. He said, he's got strings around that tree, Chet. There was no strings around that tree. He could do it from what they taught him, from the quiet they taught him. Mm. So that's when I was part of Tukwan, I must have been about eight. There was four four girls my father took. And villagers in the village could take part in it. said, I'm going to take one day. I'm going to provide food for your, the people. That's here. My father had the seals. Eh? So there was four of us. And he brought us to the point at our, our house. It, this old man, he cut himself with something on his leg. Spread his blood on our face. Eh? Then we walked back to the hall. And I got my first name there. That is very small part of Tukwan I was part of. Because children weren't allowed to be running around the village and that. And there was this uh, wolf around that Nani was around. I seen that Nani trying to chase out an old lady because nobody was supposed to be out. Kahana. Carrying her wood and she said nobody's supposed to be out. But mm -hmm. the Tukwana was very strict. Very strict. That the rules, guidelines you had to go by. That is at the houses, I'm sure Hesh could set the same. But Tukwana was a very important part in law and order. Joe. Can I add a little bit to this, Chuska? Oklashist Aquakila, his Takshit Ahoset. I um, witnessed one in a house or two, I remember, with my um, uncle Richard Atlio. And um, being a part of it to our member of the real specific, when you go in, the women were brought to one side, the men were brought to the other, they were not to sit together. And um, it was said that if you had any business to take care of, if you had any disagreements, any fights, anything that needed to be settled, it had to be brought in that room and settled right there. It wasn't about winning, it wasn't about who, who gets what, it was about putting everything to rest. And uh, that was the power of the hot way the hot was had to say this stops right here and it was meant to be part of the healing to put all your stuff in uh, into one place and then let it go i remember that was the big part of it but i remember that the, there was a specific seating uh, for where the chiefs could sit and where other people could sit based on their rank and file and the men all went to the right and the women all went to the left uh, it was pretty pretty amazing to see mm. Mm. Hmm. Uh -huh. Our grievances are pretty backed up by now. <laughs> I'll wait be there for days. <laughs> Months, maybe. <laughs> Oh dear. Yeah, I remember. Oh. Hi, Charles. Abel was staying here. My late wife asked her, after commit Tukwana, she said, What is a Tukwana? We just know the words Tukwana. And uh, the Said, okay, I'll put it all on tape. So he did put it on tape. The songs, there are 10 songs that the, he had us at that for mm. regular songs, not just yelling. So every dance was different different beats to it, but that. And uh, every time the, the singers ended their 
song. One of the one of the singers would give out a howl, a wolf howl. Because when the quiet eight came in, they just went right into the room and I guess being out in the woods for four or five days, they were pretty tired. And we got some heat that probably went right to sleep. <laughs> so that was the thing that they did. Every song, out of the 10 songs, there'd be a wolf howl after the song is done. And And the uh, master ceremonies after the tenth song, he would get up there and say, "We can't wake the wolves up." So he would. They would order some of the chiefs from the other tribes to come up and dance with the dancers that were going around. So they would come up and start dancing. The last song, then the quiet they could wake up, and uh, once they got got up, they would start uh, chanting, They'd chant the uh, head chiefs, head chiefs, second chiefs third chief and fourth chief. And that was a more or less the end of the Tlukwana, we were saying. Then the chiefs, whoever was putting up a party would take over after that. And when he was putting the songs on the tape, he said, well, somebody will want to Somebody someday will want to learn these songs. And he was looking right at me when he said that. And I learned all those songs. I learned all the chants as well. And I remember there was a meeting at Mott Moss there. And late Jerry Jack, he said, he mentioned my name that the or Lance was still alive, eh? Lance Ambrose. And Abel was saying that he is a chief, head chief of it. He has it. So oh. Jerry got up and said, Hey, Patrick, Pat wants to put up a Took one up, but it wasn't me, it was Lance that wanted to put it up. But no, nobody in the gym answered at all. Everybody was just quiet. They, they didn't, nobody said nothing. So, so that's all lost now. The 10 songs that that went with that loop one and the chants of the chiefs. Are they lost because of Lance's passing or? No. No. Nobody can bring it out now. Oh. The way he had us at that at there. That there to Kwana. Mm -hmm. The songs and the way I was just saying. Every song. When it's finished, there would be a wolf owl. Nine, nine songs until uh, then they would get up and say nobody, the wolves aren't getting up. But when they say and sang the tenth song, I guess that everything set up that way. Anyway. Oh, she said.
Good evening, everyone. I love you. Uncle JC. Do your chairs. Say Martin. Oh, it's good to hear. You're all. I'm sitting here with my my daughter. So. So. Hello. Hi. Hello. Good to see you, Pat. Yeah, good to see you too. Yeah. Uh, uh, good to see a big smile. <laughs> <laughs> yes. The um I think the only time that I ever was really probably seeing anything of a flu quantum ritual was uh, when I think it was Chief Eddie Joseph died. They were having his funeral and they were having the um Oh. Those wolves go throughout the village, uh -huh. and we were not allowed to look out. And I remember I looked out, and my mom, my mom was there. She was really stern with me, but she didn't. Uh, she was not real mean or anything. But I was told I'm not allowed to look out. But I remember those people going by the house. They were going between every house, and through Tzicha going through it was late. Uh, mm -hmm. Harry Charlie, now awesome. Uh. I, I remember that, but I also remember the uh, songs they were singing. But those uh, those things, I I, I uh, kind of had an understanding of how I grew up myself over at Hukitsit with their winter wolf ritual. And how it used to take place at uh, between the new moon and full moon after December 21st. Mm -hmm. That all the young boys and girls would be initiated into it. And then after that, it was uh, <clears throat> when we began learning about all of our roles and responsibilities to each other and also to the land. Mm -hmm. That was the most important part of it. I do know and have heard several times about Mamathis making regards to us saying we can hunt any old time and kill as much as we want. Us. No, we were not allowed to do that. We were not allowed to hunt when the animals are pregnant and you know take too many fish. You know, there we had we had rules, we had laws, our people were there. Mm -hmm. Since they've uh, taken charge of it, they just reduced our resources almost to nothing. Life, uh, I know about the people that you know have been participating in here in our resource. Now, Pat is a really good fisherman. I know you are, Pat. I've seen you out here fishing in the way the, the ocean was back in the day. Holy crow, that was amazing. All the fish that were here, you know, and only five minutes yes, away. Yes, there's uh, a lot of uh, the uh, different um, uh, rituals that people I think have had uh, would do them perhaps <laughs> differently and uh, uh, tribally would uh, do it different <laughs> opposite, slow a little bit different from each other into the winter wolf ritual. But I think that many of the teachings are basically the same. It's a uh, Neat to hear. I'm really glad that I was able to sit here and listen to this discussion this evening. Mm -hmm. uh, cool. Good to see you. Now. Good to see you too, Uncle. Joe Martin, Pat Charlson. What is the word for when a wolf is howling? Yeah. I heard Alec use it and I heard Caroline Little use it. The word they use is masusik. 
with that for a long, long time. And that other word, oh. <laughs> <Joe. laughs> I knew that too. <laughs> Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Ma susil. Ma susil. Mm. Howling. Howling. Wolf howling. Who's mm. that mm. I'll just tell a little story before we go. When the wolf howls, muscle shit. Yeah. Okay, let's break the. True. <laughs> True. <laughs> Short break. It's a break. Can you mute it? Sure. I forgot my mask. Yeah. <laughs> Grandpa, you? how are the Canucks doing? <laughs> golf. <laughs> Must have signed their golf clubs, eh? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> hey, Chicago wasn't making the playoffs till they joined him. <laughs> Hi, Uncle Davy. Hey. Hello, Davy. Holy crow, it's been a long time. Pick up uh, Mr. Martin. Oh, no. Archaeology survey, the story should come up, eh? Your Honor. <laughs> Hello, sister. Hello. Hello, is sun shining over there? Ha 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 Quite a while. Ginger uh, bandit. Look at your pit. Or cheeks or something. Sorry, you nurse. Oh, I'm going to shut Hmm. How are you doing, Carl? You... Uh, hello, Carl. Can you hear me? Can you hear me? Carl? Carl? Joe? Joe? Uh, it's Joe Martin. Yeah. Joe. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I haven't seen you guys for so long. I forget <laughs> how you guys look. <laughs> Sorry. Great family, wrong first name. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, I'm, I'm good. Been uh, just carving um, 
getting ready to start another canoe, but I'm just finishing up a couple of wool figures that are going into the Slow Quiet Travel Parks and the Pacific Rim National Park. And then, oh. then I'll start a canoe, a couple of canoes right after, I guess. Oh. Right on. Mm -hmm. Taking that right after your late grandfather. Slowish. Yeah. Uh, made 80 canoes in his lifetime. Eh? Oh, bro. <laughs> <laughs> so you taken right after your great grandpa. <laughs> Right behind him. <laughs> yeah. About eighty now. Flawish <laughs> <laughs> made canoes. Uh, last oh, yeah. night was for the Comox and on uh, in October, last October, and they haven't launched it yet. Yeah. <laughs> uh, <laughs> <laughs> Well, we had good teachers. We had uh, our ancestors and my dad and stuff. From late Chief Bennett Andrews, I, I like to uh, acknowledge him because he gave me some really good pointers. He was uh, visiting me down at uh, down at uh, Hisawista Huak when the uh, houses were first built on the beach there. Chief Bennett Andrews came in. I was carving a canoe and he was walking along, adjusting his thick glasses, walking around the canoe going, ha, ha, you guys are all right. He says, you're all right. <laughs> <laughs> then he gave me some simple tips, which really made sense. And uh, yeah, he says, all you got to use is a string and a rock to keep it balanced. Uh, that made sense immediately. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, all these things are really interesting. You know, I I I, I listened to uh, my dad when he was around here still, and then the way Chief Bennett Andrews was, and and there were other folks of his uh, nature. My dad used to speak highly of those folks, and talk about the. Um, the teachings we have had as Kluas, which was uh, very different from Mamathli. We, we were here and we did things. And, and he used to talk about that Chief Bennett Anders. Ah, oh, he was a good boat builder. He could take a, a piece of wood. He could look at a, just measure the length of a plank and look at the shape and then cut it and fit it right in. He said he was, he was so good. He was able to do that. People had a, a different uh, way that they learned. Hmm. And, and so when I look at that, and even like when my, he told me that my grandfather, George Martin, did a similar thing with putting a bulkhead into a boat. He measured the width of it, and he stood outside and studied the shape of it. And then he cut it in one cut. It was fitted like that. You know, those hmm. folks were Atsik. They had uh, they had the feeling for it. Hmm. Charlie Thomas, he always speak of late Charlie Thomas, good canoe builders. Oh. Mm -hmm. It looked like um, Tiak Pikum's device powered out because he suddenly, we suddenly lost him off the call. Sometimes oh. the device dies. Mm -hmm. Are we still on? Did he, he, did he touch it? You're now looking at clutch. Uh, <laughs> What was her name again? Hi, Grandpa. Hi. <laughs> How are you? Good, thanks. How are you? Oh, good. Good. Yeah. Yeah. Gee, I haven't good. seen you in a while. Yeah, a long time. Very long time. Yeah. Yeah. And Vicky, I haven't seen you. Alkitsk. You're on mute. 
früh. How it's oh is this miss? Oh, oh yeah. hey, that was uh, <laughs> diamonds. Uh, <laughs> Anyway, I wanted to tell you about when uh, Elsie Robinson, she used to come to Kakos when I worked there. And then uh, she, she told me she used to go to Eshkut when she was a little girl and her parents would take her around. And, and then she remembered Tlumkai and he said he was a really a cute guy, just cute. And he, he called all the children outside and then uh, he howled like a wolf, sounded just like a wolf. And the wolves came out of the bush in a circle and went back in. And she said that was him. And when he couldn't talk, and that was my story, too. Oh. <laughs> You're back, Tiffany. <laughs> there, was, there were some people trying to blame me for touching it. I'm going to tell them. <laughs> <laughs> trying to earn myself a bag of upsquee here. <laughs> Uh, you know, um, I saw something interesting. Uh, it was a guy from Africa, and it really re relates. I, I really found it uh, relates to what we're going through and what we're talking about here, eh? With the Tlupana, yeah. with all our governance. Mm. He said, I find it really funny that you, you uh, colonizers like to think that you created civilization in Africa. You didn't. You arrived here and you interrupted civilization. So <laughs> you didn't bring. You didn't bring land. You didn't bring resources. You didn't bring anything. You brought. You brought a church and a Bible and laws, but they're for you, not for us. We already had civilization. You just made it all messed up. He said. Like I say. Mm. Bob Bone is turning over in his grave now. <laughs> yeah. mm -hmm. oh, I get to meet a lot of uh, groups from universities and stuff across, sometimes from across Canada and other schools that come here to Tofino. I get to meet quite a few people, yeah. including. Uh, tourists that come around from other parts of the world but mm. I like to talk about art and the way that uh, you know certainly when the Europeans arrived here yes we were illiterate could not read the stuff they had but I say so were they when they seen our art when they seen our totem poles all they can describe them in uh, in the ship's logs of uh, Captain Cook arrows that there were grotesque figures carved on a piece of wood. But those things are, it's basically our constitution teachings, teachings of natural law that our people lived under. Mm. Very different from how Europeans work. And then yeah. certainly, you know, a lot of those songs and dances of awareness that, that were there, all those in keep some dances and there, any of the dances that any of our people did were, were um, all about awareness, many of them. But uh, yeah, that's something I like to share with the Mamashi when they come here. Because then as they called us savages, but as well, who burnt five million of their own women at the stake? It certainly mm -hmm. wasn't us. <clears throat> and so, yeah. You know, I, I, I do believe that our people have had a connection to the supernatural. And it was explained through uh, some of the elders a long time ago, like Harry Charlie and my grandfather, late George Hayup, not Hayup is what type of his name, not George. Roy. Anyway. Roy Hayup. Roy Hayup, thank you. Yes, thank you. 
He was talking about that during the Mears Island court case when it first started, mm -hmm. about the connection to the supernatural that our people have had, gave us the abilities to be able to hunt a, a whale that is so uh, huge. Mm -hmm. And when I talk about whale hunting, I say it is the equivalent of eight mice taking you down. Mm -hmm. About how big we are compared to a whale. <laughs> The size of a <laughs> uh -huh. People, you know, I've heard countless times of the stories of people being pulled way out on the ocean and the songs and the prayers they did to get that whale to turn around and pull them back home. Mm -hmm. You know, that the people have had. And I really do uh, appreciate all those songs and dances and I have recordings I listen to often. And, the other things that keep me connected, I suppose, in a way. Mm -hmm. I really do appreciate them. And every time I see any of you here, of all of you that are here that uh, share these things, it's amazing. It's some really important things to do, I feel, too. Mm -hmm. you, you. Let go, let go. Oh, it was supposed to be his sister that was supposed to be out, JP? Yeah. Can't remember. Uh, yeah, okay. I thought, I don't know, I wrote it down. Yeah, we are due to a week ago. But the funeral. Well, they canceled it. Yeah, so we're going to talk about it again. Mm. Yeah. Is she on for Wednesday then? Who's on for Wednesday? Uh, oh, Cecilia was wondering okay. if you might want to ha hop on Tuesday or Thursday. Yeah, yeah. You're breaking my heart. Thank <laughs> 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 you. Uh, uh, sorry. <laughs> sorry with all the things going on, the death and death before. So. We've been waiting patiently. Mm -hmm. We will be on me and Carrie. That's uh, Wednesday. Um, Wednesday we have Wednesday or Thursday. We I'll have see somebody. What Carrie is. Let me check the posting. I know we have somebody for Wednesday from our original schedule. Thursday. I forgot my story now. <laughs> I can't Once on Thursday. Can't on Thursday. No, I get done classes on Thursday. I thought we were postponing it till the end of the people already scheduled the one after it. <clears throat> I don't know. Whenever, whenever you're ready. No. When was the last one scheduled for? May 16th. Monday, May 16th. So the Wednesday mm. after that? Yeah, 18th. That would work. Sasa. Uh, May 18th. Uh, Okay. Plus Wednesday morning or evening? Same evening. Okay. And then I think uh move quest would have been after the summer. Uh -huh. <laughs> um Delore? Uh -huh. uh -huh. She could go any night though, because the the Monday after that is a holiday, Victoria Day. Hmm. It's Queen's birthday. Yay! Oh yeah. It says really, birthday. Yeah. You're breaking my heart. <laughs> it says birthday in two days. The Queen. Oh. <laughs> uh. 
nobody go colonizing anything on her birthday now. <laughs> Wednesday night, I have a plan. <laughs> My birthday. <laughs> Next one. Next Wednesday. Is it next Wednesday? Yeah. No, no your birthday is this Wednesday. But you guys will be on next Wednesday. Oh, okay, next Wednesday. Mm. Uh. <laughs> she has <laughs> not <laughs> got <laughs> mm. I didn't, does anybody remember who's doing Wednesday? On my schedule, it says Chapat and Chisma. Oh, good. Open friend. Chapat and Chisma. We did already. Who asked a klitsu? It's not fair. The others have to go through first. Uh, uh, could, uh, do you want me to get a hold of Mohakwil and see if she's yeah. ready? Yeah. Okay. Don't be chicken. Don't be chicken. I'll phone her right now on here. Mm. We just want an encore of two pot and cheese ma. Oh my. <laughs> I'm just gonna tell a story to Matthew's grants and Logan about Unum and Dahupna. And when I finished telling the story, he said to me, I don't even know what an elk or wren is. I've never <laughs> seen them, Mrs. Chip. <laughs> living in town. Okay. Uh, hmm. No answer. We get. Uh, uh, well, while we're all waiting, here's this um, one time my my auntie Doreen. She was uh, at Kelsmith camp, the, the summer Bible camp they have at home. And my nephew, my nephew Chach, his name is was just a young guy, a real young kid yet. And it's the evening time. The fire is on, and he's there. He's roasting marshmallows with a stick. And you know how the smoke goes around the fire when you're sitting here roasting marshmallows, eh? He's got one eye open. And my auntie Doreen says, Chachi, yeah, Grandma? He says, do you know why we're here? I don't know, because they're camping? She says, well, it's a Bible camp. Oh, he says, okay. And she says, well, do you know what we're here for? And she says, I don't know. We're just swimming and stuff. He just said, having fun. No, no. We're here learning about the Bible and we're learning about Jesus. And she says, do you know who Jesus is? Quotes. And she's, he's got one open, his marshmallow still roasting. He's, I don't know. He says, I don't even know if we're related. <laughs> <laughs> Speaking of how kids see things. Eh? Yeah. <laughs> 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 Why teach it ha a bug ha hope Wednesday at go more quick? Do you 
Dolores Bain, Wednesday. Uh, are we back in the morning here? Ah, uh, quick. No, um, not till we start pathways again. Then we'll we're, start mornings. Mm -hmm. When are we gonna start that? Good question. I'll June? I'll I'll give you update on Wednesday. I'll email them today and find out, cause uh, they accepted our and approved our last year, so it's yeah. just a matter of time. Yeah. True. Ah. Oh, Church. There is one more I wanted to share with the elders before I go. Mostly Slaxis Anna. Ah. This guy from the lake asks. We could put that. Lake man. Church. 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 Church.